All right, welcome back to section 3.2, part two, beyond the basics of variation. And we're also going to be looking at the calculator. So the empirical rule for data with a bell-shaped distribution, ding, 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 very important, states um, the following to be true. 68% of all values fall within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% within two, and 99.7 within three. This definitely will want to be on your cheat sheet. So this is a visual of that. So again, X bar is the mean, 68% within one standard deviation, that's one. Two standard deviations, we're looking at 95%, and three standard deviations, 99.7. Okay, so let's look at this example here. IQ scores have a bell-shaped distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. What percentage of IQ scores are between 70 and 130? I always like to draw, and you guys should be used to my terrible drawings by now, and the mean always is right in the middle, so that's 100. And then one standard deviation on either side would be plus 15 and minus 15. And I'm still not to 70 and 130, so I'm going to keep going. Two standard deviations, boom. So what do I know from the empirical rule? Well, within two standard deviations is 95%. All this is 95%. And so about 95% of all IQ scores are between 70 and 130. Go ahead and give this one a try. Press play when you're ready to see the answer and please draw a bell curve to help you. And there you go. Chebyshev's theorem is a little different. Instead of saying, um, and this one's less important, but will still want to be on your cheat sheet, but 75% of values lie within two standard deviations and 89% within three. We really use the empirical rule more often, but according to Chebyshev's theorem, let's do the same thing. So IQs have a mean of 100 um, and a standard deviation of 15. What can we conclude? Well, Chebyshev says that 75% are between two standard deviations. So two standard deviations we know is 70 and 130. So this one is saying 75% of IQ scores lie between an 89% within three. So that is what Chebyshev's theorem is telling us. So you go ahead and give this one a try. And there you go. Now, look, going back to variation, um, so taking this beyond the basics here is comparing it in different samples or populations. There's a coefficient of variation, and this is the formula for determining it. And basically, it describes the standard deviation relative to the mean, and this is how you figure it out. So you take the standard deviation, you divide by the mean, and then to, to express it as a percent, you multiply by 100. And we often round the coefficient of variation to one decimal place. So if we're comparing the variation of 50 Verizon data speeds, um, and we want to compare it for some reason to the magnitudes of 600 earthquakes, for the data speeds, we get the mean is 17.6 and the standard deviation is 16.02. For the earthquakes, the magnitude mean is this and the standard deviation is that. Now we want to compare a variation among data speeds to the variation among earthquakes. So we're basically trying to say is data speed vary more or less than earthquake magnitude. So we'll apply this formula to both and then we can see, we can kind of normalize it and see what's going on. So when we use that formula, we see that Verizon data speeds vary 91% and earthquake magnitudes vary 25%. To be perfectly honest, I wouldn't want earthquakes to vary that much. I would want them to be pretty steady and similar. I also would want my data to be pretty steady and similar, but I care less about that. Earthquakes are kind of like a bigger deal. So biased and unbiased estimators, go ahead and read this one over, but um, sample standard deviation do not tend to center around the value of the population standard deviation, um, and, but the variance is an unbiased ad, um, estimator. All right, let's use our calculator. So if you recall, the same thing works um, for measures of variation because when we do that one variable statistics that we learned in the previous section, we found the mean right there and the median, but what do you see right here? Well, that would be the sample standard deviation, right, the S, and the sigma would be our uh, population standard deviation. So we can actually use the same process 
to figure, um, figure this out. So let's go back to our Jersey examples. And um, I already have my data in here. Let's turn this on. Let's pretend like I didn't have that already. So I'm gonna check my data. It is in there from before. And then I'm gonna hit stat. I'm gonna go over one to calc, one variable statistics. My list is in L1, calculate. And I can see right there that my um, sample standard deviation is 33.23. And um, I believe this question actually also wants the variance. To figure out the variance, that's the standard deviation squared. So I would just take, so I've got my sample standard deviation right there. I would square it and that would give me my variance. So you try with the data speeds. You might still have the data in your calculator, maybe not, but you remember how to place it back in the list and then press play when you're ready to see the answer. And that concludes section 3.2.